Have you ever wondered how wind turbines work? What's the engineering and science behind them? And why many countries use them for renewable energy? Well, to find out more, watch this video. Hey guys, I'm MJ Sanga, your creative engineer. Now, this video might be a bit lengthy, but stick with me because you might learn a lot. So, wind turbines, what are they? To put it simply, it's a device that converts mechanical energy into electricity. And then this electricity can be used in our homes, workplaces, and even factories. Now, in order for the mechanical energy to be converted to electrical energy, we need an energy source, and this is wind energy. Now, before we dive into the mechanics and aerodynamics of a wind turbine, I'd like to explain more on this wind energy. A few things about wind energy is that it's clean, it's abundant, and it's a renewable energy source. This wind energy can be harnessed to convert kinetic energy into electricity. And I'm gonna explain the three principles behind it. The first one is the conversion of kinetic energy. So we all know that air moves because of kinetic energy. So how do we harness this energy? Now, knowing the law of thermodynamics, we know that energy can neither be created or destroyed. However, it can be transferred. If we create a mechanism that can allow the moving air that passes through it to cause that mechanism to move, we can transfer that kinetic energy to the mechanism. This is one of the first principles of a wind turbine. Now, the mechanism we need to transfer the kinetic energy from the air to the wind turbine is the wind turbine blades. Now, I can explain this in form of a blockade. Because of the kinetic energy in the air, it will be moving from one point to another. Now, if we put the blades in front of the air, the air will need to push the blades out of the way in order for the air to move from one point to another. This is where the conversion of kinetic energy happens. So when the air moves the blade, the blade will rotate and this will create the mechanical energy. Our second principle is aerodynamics and lift. The design of the wind turbine is based on the principles of aerodynamics. The shape and angle of the blades are carefully designed to maximize the lift force generated by the moving air. This lift force allows the blades to capture more wind energy and rotate more efficiently, increasing the overall power of the turbine. And our third principle is electricity generation. Wind turbines are equipped with generators that convert mechanical energy to electrical energy. And we know that typical generators used in industries and homes convert electrical energy to mechanical energy. However, inside a generator, there is a magnet and coal wires. Now, I'll be using the basic concept and structure of a PMSM motor to explain how this works. Now, this rotor will be connected to the blades of the wind turbine. As the wind causes the blades to move, there will be a mechanical energy applied to the rotor. Now, as the magnets move through, the stator will have coals. And using the laws of magnetism and electricity, we know that when a core of wire cuts through the magnetic field of a magnet, it creates an induced current. This induced current creates electrical energy, which is then applied to the batteries or powers the homes or factories that the wind turbine is connected to. So now that we understand the three basic principles of a wind turbine, let's dive a little bit into the aerodynamics of it. Now, the aerodynamics of wind turbines is a crucial aspect of their design and efficiency. The understanding and optimization of aerodynamics help maximize the power output of wind turbines. Now, there are a lot of factors involved when considering the design of the wind blade to improve the aerodynamics. And I'm just gonna give you a few examples of them. Number one, the blade shape. The shape of the wind turbine blades plays a significant role in capturing the energy of the wind. Generally, wind turbine blades have an air foil shape. The air foil shape is designed to generate lift as the wind flows over and under the blade. This lift force is essential for rotating the blades and converting the wind energy into mechanical energy. So we need to note that it is wind energy, then it's converted to mechanical energy, then the mechanical energy is converted to electrical energy. I hope you're not getting lost. And if you're understanding and enjoying this video, please hit the like and subscribe. 
So the second part of the aerodynamics is the angle of attack. So the angle at which the wind strikes the wind turbine blade is known as the angle of attack. It's the angle between the incoming wind direction and the cord line of the blade. So it's a straight line from the leading edge to the trailing edge of the airfoil, as seen in this diagram. Now by adjusting the angle of attack, the blade can optimize its interaction with the wind to generate maximum lift. Finding the ideal angle of attack is crucial for maximizing the turbine's power output. And yes, there are a lot of equations involved when it comes to designing these things. But don't worry, I won't quiz you afterwards or give you some exercise after this. This is just to help you understand what's involved. Another crucial part is the Belts limit. This is named after the German physicist Albert Belts. It establishes the maximum amount of energy a wind turbine can extract from the wind. According to the Belts limit, the maximum energy a wind turbine can get from the air is 59.3%. However, even though the number is bad, it does play an important role in collecting wind energy. And our last factor, just to mention in this video, is turbulence and wake effects. When the wind passes through the wind turbine blades, it creates turbulence and disturbance in the air downstream, also known as wake effects. These wake effects can impact the performance of nearby wind turbines. We also need to know that it is not just one wind turbine that's at work here. In most fields or areas, there's more than one wind turbine, but they are spaced at geometrical distances so if there's a wake effect, turbulence will be caused and the uncontrolled or rough flow of air that is caused by the turbulence will affect the performance of nearby wind turbines. So it's very possible for one turbine to have a low amount of wind energy while another one has a high amount of wind energy because of this wake effect. So it is very important to design the wind blades with the belt's limit. Now, these are not the only factors that we have to consider when improving the aerodynamics of the wind turbine. There are also control systems, placement considerations, and design improvements that are taken into consideration as you design your wind turbine. So in our next process, we're going to talk about the electricity conversion and how everything works, the engineering part of it. So to do so, I designed a CAD model using SOLIDWORKS to help explain what goes on in the wind turbine. So this is our model, and maybe I'll just show you a few clips of me designing it so that I can just show off my SOLIDWORKS skills. <laughs> yeah, so enjoy. Now, let's talk about the electricity generation of the wind turbine. Again, there are a lot of factors and principles that go on as mechanical energy is converted to electrical energy. I just gave you a small explanation of how it's done using a PMSM motor. PMSM motor stands for Permanent Magnet Synchronous Motor. Well, there's motor in motor. So I'm saying motor twice. <laughs> anyway, these are just a few factors that we have to know in order to understand the electricity generation in a wind turbine. The first principle is the rotational motion. This is the most important because all the mathematics and design of the wind blade and analysis of the aerodynamics helps improve the performance of the rotational motion. It is because of this rotational motion that mechanical energy is produced. So in the design, the blades will be connected to the shaft and this shaft will transfer the mechanical energy to the generator to create electrical energy. The second thing needed for electricity generation is the generator. Because of the generator, the mechanical energy is converted to electrical energy. The generator is typically located inside the nozzle 
which is the housing top of the wind turbine tower. The generator has two components, which is the rotor and the stator. The rotor will be attached to the shaft, which the mechanical energy will then be transferred from the shaft to the rotor. This will cause the magnets attached on the rotor to cut the magnetic field lines of the pole to create electrical energy. Next is the electromagnetic induction. So the rotor will have magnets attached to it and the stator will have core wires attached to it. The rotor will be attached to the shaft and the mechanical energy will be transferred from the shaft to the rotor. As I explained earlier, when the core wires cut through the magnetic field lines, this creates what is known as an induced current. This is the next factor that is involved in the process of electric generation, the induced current. So this induced current that's produced is in an alternating current. By alternating, I mean that the level of current that is produced is fluctuating. It is not constant. So it moves from its maximum production to its minimum production. And this is done at a fast rate. This electricity generated is then moved from the wind turbines to the electrical grids. It is then converted to a DC current, which can be used by electronic devices and machines. So then, why is wind energy important? Why is the wind turbine an important factor in African countries, in Asian countries, and beyond? The first advantage is that it's a renewable energy source. In this constant world, countries in Africa, Asia, Europe, America, even Australia, are facing electrical challenges or energy source challenges. While most countries have nuclear power plants, other countries do not. And this is a huge challenge because many people need electricity. In this generation, electricity has proven to be a vital component in living. Next, we have energy independence. Many countries in Africa and Asia heavily depend on imported fossil fuels for their energy needs. Wind turbines offer a way to diversify the energy mix and reduce dependence on these imports. By harnessing the abundant wind resources available in these regions, countries can achieve greater energy independence and enhance their energy security. Next, we have rural electrification. There are many remote areas in many African countries and Asian countries that do not have access to electricity. By installing wind turbines in nearby remote areas, they can have access to electricity that can help improve their living. Because a wind turbine requires installation, operation, and maintenance, this will attract a lot of engineers, technicians, and many skilled professions to enter the field of renewable energy. This creates a lot of jobs and investments in the country. It also has an advantage on the economic growth of the country. And our last advantage involves climate change impacts. Most countries use water as a source of energy, others use solar, and there are many other forms of energy sources used to convert electricity. There are a lot of dams in Africa, and because of the high temperature increase because of climate change, the water in those dams reduce. Because of the level of water going down in most dams, power companies will have to reduce the amount of electricity produced and transferred to many areas. This can cause load shedding. And in most countries like Zambia, South Africa, and Zimbabwe, load shedding can go for probably half of the day or one or two days, depending on the area. Now, with the lack of electricity supplied to hospitals, patients that will need electrical equipment might not survive. However, even though climate change can cause temperatures to rise and weather patterns to change, the air does not change. It is still available and renewable. Thus, because of this, wind turbines can be installed in many countries, allowing many places such as hospitals, manufacturing places, workplaces, and homes to receive electricity allowing people not to have things like load shedding, patients to be able to use their devices and people to work and manufacturing processes to continue going on. Overall, wind turbines in Africa, Asia, and many regions provide multiple benefits, including clean and renewable energy, energy independence, rural electrification, job creation, and climate change mitigation, and so much more. Investing in wind energy infrastructure can lead to sustainable development, improved living standards, 
and a more resilient energy system for these regions. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you learned something about the aerodynamics, electricity generation, and the basic principles behind a wind turbine. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to watch more of my videos, they are available on this channel. Please don't forget to subscribe. And I really hope to see you again in my next upcoming video. Have a blessed day.